with Simon from ZWO, and we are looking at a new product here, the Sea yep. Star 30, 30 Pro. Pro. All right, can you tell us a little bit about it? What's new? Sure. So, Sea Star has been an absolute smash for us. You know, we 50 came out, lots and lots of interest, bringing people into the hobby. We've never touched astronomy before. We, uh, you know, developed it further with the Sea Star 30. You know, the 30 is sort of a more compact version. You know, when we were here at NIF last year, we were talking about Seastar going in two different directions. One was, you know, the more sort of lightweight and compact, and then the other direction was to come up with some sort of more pro versions of these. And this is the first step in that evolution, so to speak. So the 30 Pro, I mean, as you can see, it doesn't look anything different than a Seastar right. 30. It's the same body style, but we've done a lot of changes in there. So let's start at the top here in the arm. So the wide field uh, optics in there have been changed. We've now got an 84 degree field of view in the secondary wide field camera. The little guy up top. Yeah, there. the little guy on top. The great thing is we've probably answered a big complaint and question that people had before is uh, how can I do Milky Way and Star Trail imaging? The original C Star 30, the sensor wasn't good enough for that. We have changed the sensor in here now for an IMX586. That's probably not something that viewers will be familiar with. However, almost all of you have got an IMX586 sticking in your pocket it. because it's a chip that's used in mobile phone cameras. Um, that will actually then allow us to do uh, star trails and Milky Way photography and we'll update the app as well so that we'll keep it simple and easy because we don't want to make it hard for people. Um, so that will give you that capability that people have looked for quite a lot over the last year or so since 30 has been out. The main optics as well have changed, so we've gone to a four element APO instead of a three element and that's going to give you sharper stars, better color correction there. And to match that, we're also changing the main sensor to an IMX585. And the 585 is really one of the most popular, you know, sort of small format sensors that we're using. And for good reason, it's a, it's a 4K sensor so um, that's going to give you a much better resolution. It's got high sensitivity, so it's a Starvis 2 sensor. So it's really one of Sony's best nighttime performers. That's going to give you improved nighttime performance. And um, that match with the optics is going to be a case of, uh, that's going to be a case of, um, we're going to get a wider field of view. We're going to have uh, a four and a half degree by 2.3 degree field of view. And uh, so, C Star 50 was quite sort of quite narrow. 30 was wider. The 30 Pro will be wider still. So, if you love doing things like the Rosette Nebula or Andromeda, you know you're going to get a lot more field in you know, visible. In terms of resolution, uh, is this a higher resolution sensor also? Yeah, it is. So indeed. you can still yeah. crop in if you are interested yeah. in some targets that are smaller in size. Yeah. So it's going to give you a much better, it's an, another 4K sensor. The 585 is like, a, um, I think it's a 3130 by 2130 sensor. So it's a, mu it's a much more sort of you know, dense uh, capability in there. So you're going to have a really, really nice field of view. You're going to have a nice resolution, a nice crisp image as well. And I see it's been... Tilted yeah. on its side here, we now have some equatorial capability. Yeah, so C Star 30 and 50 have already got the equatorial mode available. This was available about sort of three or four weeks ago. We've been testing this last few months and uh, that will come to the 30 Pro as well. And uh, you have mounted it on our new uh, equatorial head here. So there's a little hydraulic head that we're going to be releasing in the next month or so. And uh, that will allow you to do equatorial mode really, really simply. It's Does it allow you to get like a proper polar alignment through software then? Yeah. So um, the first part of it, of course, is setting up the latitude that you're at. So uh, C-Star will uh, calculate that latitude angle and on the uh, app it will tell you what angle to tilt to 
and using the gyroscope in the Sea Star, um, as you adjust the angle of elevation, it will uh, it will show that on the screen. And you basically, it's a game. You match right. one to one. Yeah. So if it says 41 degrees, you match 41 degrees. Job done. Two, three, four minutes maybe, probably yeah. Yeah, max, yeah. and you're ready you, to go. You can get pretty quick on it. And you, if you're not moving latitude, you only really need to have to do that that one time. Um, it's right, only you if you're traveling. It. You could leave it set. Cool. And the other thing then is, of course, the polar alignment. And uh, basically, it's a one touch within the app. The telescope will actually go away and take three points across the sky and take an image. And then we'll display the polar alignment error on screen. Then all you have to do is adjust the telescope left and right and up and down physically using the, the EQ mount head. Mm -hmm. And then you can basically use the telescope as uh, as a normal. I'm just trying to think of the comments in the video here. Yeah. Um, I know there was some buzz about the possibility of a bigger version of Sea Star coming. Yep. Yeah, and that will be. It's in development, and for sure will meet the needs of those you know demanding users who want a bigger <laughs> aperture and better you. optics. <laughs> you're talking to you. Yeah. yeah, we're talking to you. If you're interested in a bigger version, for sure it's in development. Yeah. As we. Uh, appreciate and, and always love the Sea Star uh, bringing astronomy to more yes. people than ever. Yeah, I mean we've we've spoken to people here at the show, you know, from different societies, and saying they're really struggling to keep membership up, to keep people interested in the hobby. And uh, what we're finding now is that, you know, ASI Air, for example, brought people into astrophotography right. that may have been an astronomer before but never touched astrophotography. Sea right. Star is bringing people into the hobby that have, have never touched astronomy before, don't right. know anything about astronomy, but also it's becoming the kind of Apple version of a telescope. You know, people are starting to socially share their pictures right. and what it does and then Looks yeah. like an AirPod case yeah. almost yeah. anyway, so uh, form it, factor and all. Yeah, it, yep. it's becoming a social media you know, piece in that people are sharing their images and say, oh, I've got it off this little Sea Star unit, and then they're going out to buy one. But again, they've never touched astronomy before, so wh where can that go? It, it can only be great for the hobby, right? You know, even right. if you keep a small percentage of interest in those people, it, it's going I to be will, good for us. I will be keeping track of the updates <laughs> for the Sea Star future. Uh, as hopefully we continue to see the development of this amazing product. So thank you so much, Great. Simon. No worries. I always Good to love see coming you by. Great. Good to keep you updated. Thank you. If you're still watching and like videos like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Memberships start as low as $3 per month, with benefits including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us bring the universe even closer than you think.